get used to this one, one second. Um, wait, yes, this is the second one, right? Yes, okay. Um, okay, actually, I think I, this, I'm starting um, with a little bit of confusion. This is uh, the, um, the presentation that I had for Moscow, <laughs> where I was a few days ago. So there is this uh, first image, which actually is um, Russian. Uh, um, anyway, so I'm going to go to this, to the second one, and then I will come back to this one later. Um, wait, yes. Uh, okay, first of all, I'm, um, um, I'm an artist. I consider myself an artist because I've been working with calligraphy, lettering, uh, um, handwriting for almost 30 years. Um, but my main interest is in research. So that's why uh, I'm actually showing a number of things that are very different from each other. Um, but yes, it's, uh, there are two main things that I do. One is teach and the, one, the other one is research. And my research is for the most part are um, how to break from the rules of uh, writing and, um, and make new ones or consider other ways of writing that are not the ones we are used to. Um, so, um, uh, yes, that's uh, um, because in general, I think that writing by hand um, has uh, a special connection to the body. It's like the great invention of writing plus the intelligence and memory of our bodies. So there is something really special about that connection that I, I just like to explore in all different ways. Um, so this one is actually a book that I published recently. Um, it's called, let's see if you can see it here, because it doesn't have a title there. <laughs> it's called La Segno, and uh, um, it's a book for um, young adults mainly. Um, but again, um, the other thing that really is my interest is to work for everybody. I am interested in, uh, in handwriting and I even um, co-founded uh, an association entirely dedicated to the teaching of handwriting to children. Um, it's a struggle because handwriting is uh, getting out slowly from uh, the classrooms, especially cursive. Um, and um, on the other hand, it is extremely important, so uh, we are doing everything we can to support this. And I believe that only if adults continue to be interested in handwriting and understand how important it is, then we can continue to have handwriting for the children. Um, so this, uh, this book, uh, is it just goes to the very foundations of um, the, the really uh, basic rules uh, of writing which have to do, again, very much with our body. One is rhythm. Um, it, when we write by hand, we respond to rhythm, and that's a rhythm we have from breathing, from the heart, so it's deeply connected with our body. Uh, when I teach this, uh, <laughs> sometimes people say they stop breathing because it's so rhythmical that unless you find the rhythm between the breath and what you're doing, you actually stop, you know, breathing, and, and that really shows you how much connection there is. The other thing I have to say is that some of the things I am saying are only understandable if you have picked up a pen and, and you know how to write. And in some ways, some of the things are only understandable if you have uh, learned to write by hand, learned very well the rules that guide handwriting, and then you try to break them. And it's when you break them that you realize how much those, ru those rules are actually into your brain. They become automatic. So it's extremely difficult to break them sometimes, even though 
you are you you understand what the what it is, but your body takes time to do it, and um, I think the same happens with every kind of writing, and particularly with typography. So, um, typographic writing and the way we read, uh, ev you know, the the spacing, um, the hierarchy, everything goes really deep into our body and our wa way of looking at the world. So that's why I think that handwriting is a way to maintain a, a sort of flexibility <laughs> that is very, is very important. Um, and I could go further on into this, but um, more specifically about the book, um, yes, it's uh, the basic rhythm, and then it is about, um, here I'm not showing obviously all the pages, I have a few more I think here, Wait, getting. Yes. Um, well, no, this is another one. But anyway, um, the the book uh, first teaches all the rules, and then slowly to um, break those rules and get into others. But so taking off all the spacing, for example, which is uh, a fundamental element of legibility. Um, but legibility has so many wonderful, perfect rules to get the, uh, the eye to go straight to the content or to, um, you know, there is a beauty to the letter, but it's always very deeply connected with the content. So content remains the primary um, objective um, often, not always, often. In handwriting, it can really, we can do this thing of, uh, moving out of legibility and concentrating more on, um, on the marks we're making. So um, getting into rhythms and variation of rhythms. Um, and textures and looking at positive, negative. And instead of uh, uh, linear writing, doing um, you know, clusters of letters. Um, this is something that might be, you know, something that is quite easy um, to see for, uh, for a designer, but for people in the most part, you know, hand, I mean, writing or handwriting is not this. And so to learn to play with letters and move out, um, it really, yeah, it becomes something like a, a game. Um, and then, um, and then I, I also uh, embrace the, uh, the potential of illegible writing because writing and reading are really two different things. So um, I can have you know, words in my mind and I write something just for myself, notes for this presentation, for instance. They are written down in such a way that no one else could read it. But it's important for me, or other times when I just have to take out my emotions and put them into words that are just mine. Um, that thing is uh, um, um, somehow, it, it's, it's a freedom that I have to make the text my own. Um, and the other thing that I've done is to uh, consider other writing systems. As someone who doesn't know anything about these writing systems, like Chinese, um, I have always been fascinated visually by um, the logograms and how they were uh, playing and kind of dancing on the page. And so I discovered at one point uh, the work of uh, an artist called the Shu Bing. And, um, he, he did uh, uh, exactly what I tried to do, um, take uh, uh, Latin letters and put them together in a logo form so they look like uh, Chinese logograms. And um, so I decided that in any case I could do this as a Western person and that would be different. And what I find in this is that I can rewrite many times uh, the same word and make it uh, it, it becomes like a dancing figure, and it is different every time. So, for instance, if I see, uh, if I look at this as a logo, 
um, yeah. um, it actually uh, has, uh, um, it's different because we are used uh, to think of a logo as something that repeats each time identical. Um, but actually, when you handwrite it, and you know, every time you write, it's a little different. So it becomes alive in some ways. And that's something that I find, yeah, very attractive. So, um, and I try to do this in many ways. So um, here, for instance, it's uh, written, it's L E L I N G U E D E L L A C R E A I T A V <laughs> Creatività. Anyway, so le lingue della creatività. Um, now I am reading it for you and giving the key, but actually my I like to play on this and not make it so obvious. And what I find is also that when, you, when I write something that is not immediately legible, I have to have something that is interesting in the content because if it takes a long time, then you want to read something interesting. <laughs> so when the legibility is there, well, text <laughs> remains important. Okay, um, yes, this is part of what you were seeing before in, the, in English. Um, at the conference I was last week in uh, uh, Moscow, I wrote with this um, logo, um, logo type uh, um, words. Um, I wrote, uh, uh, all human beings are equal in the three languages, uh, Russian, Italian, and English. Um, and yes, this, uh, this is again on the same idea. The color is something that comes in at times in my work. Um, and I very much enjoy it. Uh, later you'll see another project. Uh, but actually, for the most part, I've been working in black and white, just interested in forms, um, which is the other part um, of my work. Um, this is the work of research. And actually, um, uh, in what concerns research, uh, I also um, do all kinds of different things. So I say I'm an artist, but I don't, uh, you know, I have not developed my own style and a style that sells well, because I hardly ever sell my work. I dedicate most of my life to teaching, and research supports my teaching, and that's why I am really free to experiment and <laughs> change all the time. Um, sometimes I wonder if this is right to do, because of course I, Sometimes I wonder what the hell I'm doing. I don't know if I'm going in a good direction, if I'm doing something interesting, but I am called to research. It's just something that, um, yeah, that I like doing. So I end up always doing that. Um, in this case, both of these are uh, fully writing. I have a text. I always have a text in my mind. Uh, if I don't have a text, uh, there is not enough complexity in the, in the words uh, or, you know, in the composition uh, and in the marks. Um, but, as I say, reading and writing for me are two different things. So I really go and enjoy the, read, uh, the writing without being concerned about the reading. And I think these, uh, um, this works do communicate anyway a lot of uh, a lot of emotions, um, and it's not a precise, controlled um, uh, communication. But I also think that we live in a world where we use a lot of, or we are, you know, immersed in a lot of not so controlled communication. <laughs> so it's it's good to to think about that too. To um, somehow, yeah, embrace uh, a different way of um, looking at writing. Um, this is another one. The other thing that I like to do is uh, to, uh, to play with the space. Uh, to play with the space, uh, 
um, yes, completely out of any uh, greed consideration. Uh, so not not uh, a, a predetermined structure, but in if anything, um, I think about uh, balance of movements uh, or gravity. Um, things that help me understand if the composition works uh, on the space, but uh, on the open space. In this case, um, it's more legible if, uh, you know, if you're used to write, but this is D-A-N-C-E, dance. So maybe now that I tell you, you can see it. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Um, hmm. I have a black image after that. Okay, um, this is uh, again another of my um, illegible works. And the other thing that I find very, um, well, um, for me very engaging is, uh, is to do something with ink, with my hands, and to you know, try things that may work or not work. In this case, it was a piece that was not working. And so I decided to, you know, at the moment I felt, well, it's really good paper, I don't wanna lose this, let's try to wash it. And so I went under the faucet and I washed it and, and I liked it. Um, this is uh, another thing that I love with my work is uh, um, a part of unpredictability in what I do. So uh, I like to, uh, for example, in this uh, writing that doesn't have the, the limitations of legibility, I make a mark and then the following mark is in response to the first one. It's not necessarily where it is supposed to be, it's where it works well with the mark that I've made in the first place. And so um, that, puts me right into what I'm doing and balancing as I go. Um, and, then, uh, um, and then I like really to do things that uh, are completely out of control. Um, so sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, this I do both with this kind of work, but also with uh, legible works that I'll show you later. Um, and then something happens also like this piece this is a side story that doesn't have much to do with, um, with my work, but uh, um, when I did this piece, it was uh, just shortly uh, before um, the Fukushima disaster, and, um, and then when it happened, uh, um, actually friends from Japan were collecting money and they asked me if they could uh, sell this image, uh, and, and all of a sudden, uh, this piece for me is connected uh, to very strongly to uh, to that place because uh, it represents, uh, you know, the water coming in and destroying everything. So, um, yeah, it's also interesting how sometimes works uh, end up being connected to a specific moment um, in life. Uh, okay, now I have. No, questo non c'è più. Ok, ho un problema. <laughs> um, non so perché, ma non, non c'è non c'è più l'immagine successiva. Mm. Mm, provo ad andare a vedere se c'è. No, dico. Eh, ed è l'ultima. Ok. Um, Facciamo così, io continuo a parlare, tu vedi se riesci a sistemare la cosa. <laughs> ok, um, yeah, so um, the other thing that I thought when I was uh, thinking about the, the past two days and last evening is that actually I am showing my work because that's what I've been asked to do here, but, um, but perhaps I should have uh, showed you all the work of my students. Uh, because, as I said, most of my work is research, so it's something that is not necessarily a finished piece, um, and, but it is fundamental to, um, to make myself ready to work with my students. And so by 
working with them, seeing what they do and helping them find their ways and making something different from what they've been done be doing before, you know. So, um, um, we actually end up making things that are really beautiful to the point that sometimes I think, oh, this is better than what I do. I would like to go back and do it myself. When I go home, I can never do the same. It's sort of a combination of energies that can never really just, it's not me, it's uh, a combination and, you know, the sum of um, what we do together. Si. Ce li hai, okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, um, I need to keep going with the images. <laughs> uh, Monica, dimmi. <laughs> qua, sono qua. <laughs> Hello, I'm over here. No, it's fine. I was, um, I was very curious what you said about breathing and writing. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I went out for a, for a little moment uh, to break the spirit uh, that you say is such a routine of ours. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example how I would do that while I'm handwriting, how I would break my routine to do I like stop breathing and write at the same time or what no, do no, I no, do? No, no, no. Maybe, maybe I was not clear about this. Uh, what happens is that when you start doing the, exerc the rhythm exercises, the initial rhythms, they are so repetitive that um, you concentrate so much you realize at one point you're not even breathing. So people say, you know, I go into apnea. Yeah. And of course that's not what I am trying to teach them. <laughs> so you stop them when they turn blue or? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, they tell it to me a little bit before that. Oh, good. <laughs> but um, no, you just learn to, to breathe in accordance with what you're doing. You get okay. into a rhythm with your breath. Okay. Um, so when, when you are writing, a, it, you probably always are in rhythm with your breathing. You're just okay. not aware of it. But we do exactly. it all the time. Okay. I'll be looking out for that. You can back. Your images are back. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, this, uh, this part is just to, mm, to understand how much when we do things by hand, we engage all our body. We mm -hmm. engage the memory of our body. So it's not just brain um, knowledge or brain understanding. Yeah. Um, just this reminds me of another thing with the book that I, um, I recently published. Um, I had an editor from the, um, the publisher and I was giving the text and the editor would change the meaning by you know, fixing the words, he would actually change the meaning. So we were not understanding until we realized another person had done a class with me and was from the... Um, the publishing uh, company, and, and she understood what I was trying to say. You have to do it. Mm. When you do it, it becomes clear. If you talk about it, it's a different thing. It's not just brain, it's body. Mm. That's, uh, so sometimes, uh, yeah, we can, you know, it doesn't make sense to talk too much. But <laughs> we're, that's what I'm doing today, I'm talking. Thanks. So anyway, so this is uh, um, another piece um, of the same series because I got into this thing of uh, um, writing illegibly and then washing and, um, and, and this is definitely more artistic but as I say, I mean the important thing is that I always began with writing and I have taken writing to be something that is just my own, my own uh, um, way of working. <coughs> okay, um, this is an old uh, uh, project uh, that I did with a photographer and uh, um, uh, a model and it, it started by, um, by accident. So we started to work with this model who has alopecia, so she didn't have any hair in her body. Initially, it was just plain. This happened uh, in, uh, I think it was 2006 when we were working on this. Now, we see all, I mean, a lot of people are writing on the body, 
but at that time it wasn't uh, so common. There had been a few important uh, works, but not as many as now. Um, and, and then I sent this work to uh, a poet uh, who is a friend of mine, and she wrote poems that were based on, on the images that I sent. Um, and so I began to work with her text, and we made a whole series, uh, we made books out of this. It was a really wonderful uh, project. Um, wait, here. Uh, so, yeah, several, uh, several ones. I, it is uh, uh, writing on the body, writing in the background, and uh, a mix of this, and it, well, the meaning at one point is in some we even changed and did some Photoshop works, which I wasn't so sure about, but in the end it gave it an extra meaning because the body becomes sort of a, uh, just uh, a sum of marks, but it is as if the body is disappearing. Um, yes, so, uh, yeah, it was um, um, a long project too. Uh, yes, this is another one where writing again becomes just <laughs> marks. And I think we are going to change completely now. Um, this one is uh, uh, the another completely different project. In this case, uh, the letters uh, you see are very legible. Um, is it always this on top? Yeah, oh, okay. Sorry about that thing underneath. Yeah, it's gone. Um, anyway, this, uh, uh, this is a project uh, that I, I, w I worked on last year, and um, this time it was a commission, so something unusual for me. Especially, I mean, I have worked uh, uh, commercially and done all kinds of uh, uh, book titles and things for many years, but then I really um, slowly stopped work commercially. Um, but this was a wonderful project. It was commissioned to me by um, a humanitarian association in uh, Palermo, and it was for the 70 years of the uh, Universal Declarations of Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, um, um, they asked me to do anything I wanted, but of course it was intended to be, you know, legible, to be read by everybody. Um, so um, I made uh, a series of initially 30 posters, one for each, um, uh, for each article, and it actually ended up being uh, uh, a, a much bigger series of 50 posters because then I wanted to do them in Italian. I didn't feel that it was good to show this in, uh, uh, in Palermo, just in English, uh, so I, I did some extra ones in Italian as well. But here I developed a, um, um, a way of writing, a writing that um, allows me to write the letters, um, you know, with, I mean, this is a brush, and I can write them really narrow or large, and, um, and then to uh, somehow adjust the, co the the length of the words so I can make a composition, but what I wanted to keep here is that idea that I have with handwriting. So these pieces are just, uh, there, are, there is no planning. Um, I just sketched a little bit to, under, you know, to have a sense of the length of the words, how many letters I had for lines, um, for each line, and then, and then I just wrote it. Of course, in the beginning, I wrote two, three pieces before I got the right one. But then eventually, it, you know, it had uh, its own way to go. For, so I was just writing them out. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, the spacings weren't right, so I had to add something. But it just is uh, um, direct, no, no much planning. That's something that is also very much um, linked to writing by hand. That's the way, when you write by hand, you don't plan very much, you just do it. Um, there is one thing that I forgot to say early on, that um, writing by hand, because you don't correct so much, because it is something that you don't think has to be perfect, it's just something, you know, for yourself, 
for the most part, especially now. Um, it, it is closer to the way that, for instance, uh, Chinese or Japanese calligraphy is intended as uh, something that is, um, um, is like a discipline. And um, it connects much more strongly to life. You don't go back. So in this sense, it's, it becomes much more philosophical. It's something that by doing it, you really enter it uh, at a much deeper dimension. And, and so I like to keep that even when I do, you know, compositions or posters. Um, these then were printed or whatever, but that's how I did it, just one. <laughs> um, uh, yes, this is... Um, a couple of others. Uh, these ones uh, are, um, a, again, one thing that I have to say is that in English it's much easier to, to make these compositions because words in general are shorter. So, uh, so I could combine them well. When I started then to work in Italian, it was initially it was a disaster because I had really long words, really short ones, and, and I couldn't really make the composition. Right, um, but yeah, that was part of it. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and then you see, this is, this is the last one I did. And by the end, I was so good at uh, um, you know, predicting how long the line would be that it actually came to a pretty precise block. Um, okay, uh, I think I'm almost done. I have... Yes, I have one more image. Uh, um, the other thing that I love doing is uh, making books, and they are books that are all just one original. Um, so the other thing that I have to say is that for me to show you this is like losing three quarters of the whole pleasure of looking at my work. So I brought with me some books, and maybe there is a moment when you can come over or something and see them and take them in your hands, because I think it's a completely different experience. And um, now, yes, I am almost finished. One last thing that I want to say is that because of my strong interest in handwriting, uh, recently uh, I um, was... Uh, uh, among the first signatories of a uh, manifesto, uh, which is called the Handwriting Manifesto, and it is uh, online if you want to sign it and support it. We are, we are just saying what the reasons, all the reasons that we think um, uh, are, you know, important for handwriting, and uh, there are all kinds of information, scientific studies and so forth for teachers and people who are interested in supporting. So, yes, I think this is... Thank you very much. Thank and you, Monica. Um,